John for reading. Thank you. Will you pray with me? O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be good and acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, it is so nice to see people with skin on. Thank you for coming today. How's it feel to be back in church? You're happy about it. Yes, I am too. I think it was before Christmas the last time that we could gather here. I was here that particular Sunday, and then it seems like everybody got COVID and we all had to, to shut down. Uh, I'm, I'm so grateful that uh, we're, we're, we're being safe and uh, I'm grateful that things are l lessening in intensity so that we can be together in person, in the flesh, with each other. There's something about being with each other that nothing else can match. And it's very good to see you. You're supposed to say, it's good to see you too. <laughs> Never mind. All right, as I practice with the kids, I'd like to do with you. God is good, and all the time, well done. One more time with feeling. God is good, and all the time, Ooh, I feel so good. <laughs> I like saying that a lot. Uh, for me, that statement is filled with meaning. No matter what comes to us, no matter what causes us, Pain, in the end, God is still good. When we are suffering, and I know that people here have suffered, it can be hard, it can be almost impossible to feel God, to know that God is in the picture in our lives. In my job as a counselor, I hear about suffering all week long. But nonetheless, for me, my, myself anyway, at a very deep, deep level, I have the assurance that God actually loves me. God cares about me. And God cares about the people that I love, immeasurably. God uh, loves me more than anything I merit or deserve. And sometimes I will admit I feel far from God. It's hard to feel close to God when nations are about to go to war with each other, when people are dying from COVID, when so many uh, 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 terrible things are happening. And yet, when I take the time and begin to count the ways in which God is blessing me with family and home and church and food and shelter. I know God's presence and power are here, deep in here, even in this room, even in those of you who are worshiping via TV or computer screens. And that assurance of God gives me the confidence to move on gives me the confidence to move past the very real hurt that I know, move past my mistakes, and try again to be even Christ's representatives in the world. So if you don't feel it now, if you don't feel that presence of God, it's my sincere hope and prayer that uh, you'll come to experience and know what it's like to have that deep, deep love of God in your heart. So, God is good. And, at the same time, it is also true that life is difficult. Can I hear an amen? You said that with feeling. Life is difficult. Anywhere know, anyone know what book that phrase comes from? The book's kind of getting older, like I am. The Road Less Traveled by Scott Peck. Some of you are shaking your heads. You've read the book before. The Road Less Traveled, published in 1981. Uh, that's it. 
Life is Difficult are the opening words of one of the best-selling books of the 1980s. As a friend of mine who's a psychiatrist said, it's the book every psychiatrist wishes they had written. I'll never forget the impact on my life when I read that book. So what if it's 40 years old now? I'm over 40, and some people say I still have something to say. Thank God. <laughs> so I recommend it even now. Life is difficult, but love is real. God's love is real. And the way to bring that very real love to the surface in what is a difficult life for everyone is to learn the holy art of self-discipline. Self-discipline. Some people come to me for years and lay out their troubles, but they find it so hard to take any action that might help themselves feel better. Hard to understand. But I think for all of us, if there's something we want to change in our life, we need to learn the holy art of self-discipline. Pushing when it doesn't feel like we can push. Trying something different. Trying something new in order to get better. What did Jesus say? Ask and it shall be given to you. Life is difficult. Life is difficult. <laughs> Keeps me employed. People keep coming because life is indeed difficult. We are deluding ourselves if we think otherwise. When we exercise self-discipline, do the next thing. Talk to a stranger. Uh, apply for that job. Do whatever it is that's going to make us feel better or has a chance of it. We've got to do it. When we exercise self-discipline, we admit fully that life is not easy. And we train ourselves to confront our difficulties. But life is also full of love. God's love. If we expect it, if we open our eyes, if we allow ourselves to see where God is moving, the line, life is difficult, may have come in 1981, and it was a time when things were not great in our culture. Perhaps we could say today, life is difficult. What's going to happen with Russia and Ukraine? I hear about that every day, and it just breaks my heart. What's it like to, have, to be or to have a family in an area where there might be a conflict coming? We talk about a difficult life. I pray for those folks, and I just pray that something will happen that will keep that conflict from coming. Life is difficult. Life is difficult in individual lives. Marriages break up, families break up, churches break up. And yet, here we are today. Because I think at some level, all of us who are here know that life is difficult is not the last word. It's not the final word. God is still moving and working in our midst. And even if we have just the faintest sense of that, here we are, hoping, praying, putting our bodies in the line so that God can move in us. This is not the first time in history that these three words, life is difficult, were charged with meaning. Listen to these words of John in Revelation chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. In many ways, the entire gospel is here in these few words. John writes, I was on the island called Patmos, and I was caught up by the Spirit. John was on an island. Hey, wouldn't you like to go to the Bahamas? You know, warm up a little bit on these cold days. Acapulco, Cancun, Aruba. But Patmos was no Aruba. This island was different. It was more like the island of 
Alcatraz. Patmos was a prison colony. More than that, Patmos was a death camp. The island of Patmos itself was a death camp. Patmos was the Auschwitz of the first century for Christians who were ruthlessly being persecuted for their faith. So here was John, knee deep in disease, despair, dread, death, every bad D word you can imagine. Here was someone who knew how difficult life could be. But John has more to say than life is difficult or I was on an island called Patmos. John goes on to say that I was caught up in the spirit. Do you hear it? Do you get it? In the absolute worst of times, John says, God can do the best of things. The Dachau of the first century was the setting for one of the most dazzling revelations, one of the most technicolor visions of the future that we have in the entire scriptures. In the absolute worst of times, God has a habit of doing the best of things. Yes, life is difficult. That is a profound half-truth. But the problem with every half-truth is the other half. And in this case, the profounder half. Life is difficult. God is good. Can you say those first three words with me? Life is difficult. Well, you still got conviction with that. But now can you say these other three words with me? God is good. God is good. What is it that enables us to experience and explore the goodness of God in the midst of these great difficulties? How can we let God do the best of things in the worst of times in our lives? The writer of Hebrews tells us how this morning comes from a five-letter word called faith, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The writer of Hebrews defines faith as the ability to see the invisible in the visible, the eternal in the earthly. The list of by faith is a list of leaders like Abraham and Sarah who were able to do the best of things in the worst of times. On earth, where we are strangers and foreigners, life is difficult, but God is good. We have a, a heavenly homeland or city where Jesus' disciples really belong and toward which we journey. I think of it as going home, being home. Life is difficult. We live in a world of unfulfilled promises and realities, but God is good. We journey toward a future where God's design for creation will be fulfilled. Like John, the writer of Revelation, the Apostle Paul knew, knew what it means to worship a God who did the best of things in the worst of circumstances. When imprisoned and in chains, Paul wrote one of the greatest songs of praise to joy and peace ever penned in human history. Rejoice in the Lord always, as John read. And again, I will say, rejoice. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. In his second letter to the church at Corinth, a church that was testing Paul's patience and showing just how difficult a church could be, Paul wrote, what the late mission scholar Leslie Newbigin claimed was a key theme of the church's mission in the world. In chapter 4, Paul challenges church leaders to not lose heart and gives them instructions as to how to keep the faith. For we do not proclaim ourselves, he says. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as slaves. For Jesus' sake. Paul then begins in verse 8 a litany that put, puts both halves of this truth together. 
So we're going to have a, an audience participation sermon today. And I asked Terry if we were going to be in person uh, today for the service, and she said, yes, we are. And I'm so grateful because I could not do this part of the sermon without people. And those of you at home, you can participate certainly, but it's great to have people here in our midst. I'd like this side of the congregation be the life is difficult side. Are you feeling it? And this side of the congregation to be the God is good side. Are you feeling that? All right, let's practice that with feeling. Life is difficult. And with feeling, God is good. Don't worry, we'll switch midstream. <laughs> so from the scripture, hard pressed on every side, life is difficult. We are never hemmed in. God is good. Bewildered, life is difficult. We are never at our wit's end. God is good. Hunted. Life is difficult. We are never abandoned to our fate. God is good. And let's switch now. Struck down, life is difficult. We are not left to die. God is good. Wherever we go, we carry death with us in our body. The death that Jesus died, life is difficult. That in this body also life may reveal itself the life that Jesus lives, God is good. For continually, while still alive, we are being surrendered into the hands of death. Life is difficult. So that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in this mortal body of ours. God is good. Thus, death is at work within us. Life is difficult. And life in you. God is good. Give yourselves a hand. That was so well done. <laughs> yes, yes. How did Martin Luther put it? And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we trembled not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. And that little word is Jesus. Jesus. Can you say it softly? Jesus. Can you say it loudly? Jesus. That one word, Jesus, can let the Holy Spirit Loose in our lives until the best can happen in the midst of the worst. Faith is the ability to see the invisible in the visible. To see, the ability to see how God is good in the midst of every life is difficult. So what is faith, really? Knowing that life is difficult, but God is good. Indeed, God is good. How often? All the time. And all the time, God is good. Even when life appears to be impossible, God is still good all the time, and nothing can take away God's goodness. I believe it. I stand on it. God is good. Thanks be to God.